Today I'm going to show you how to power level from plane of knowledge. Now this is a, a common known technique and it was I, I think it was first uh, put up by uh, FC7. Uh, you can check out his site. He has a really nice site. Lots of good stuff. I check it out all the time. And I saw this video too and I thought you know what I want to try this because I wonder if it still works. And so I, I went onto the test server copied all my characters over there figuring this would be a good place to give it a try and uh, yeah it worked but along the way I had a couple questions because he shows how to do it with a necromancer and I do have a 85 necromancer which does have the the spells uh, death effigy and all that but I got to thinking about it what's really going on here how is this really working and uh, is there an easier way to do this? And then I read the comments on his video, and they're all really good comments. So I, what I did is I picked up some of the comments and have modified the technique. Now, another thing I want to say is that if Daybreak didn't want this into the game, they would have fixed it long, 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 long time ago. Because I played the game back in 1999, 2000, the early days. And if there was any little exploit, they would shut the servers down. I remember them one time, there was the, the exploit that they discovered. It wasn't that big. And it was like on a Saturday night, they shut all the servers down without any notice. There was a, a little message that said, server coming down in 20 minutes. And then the server was down for like a couple hours after that. And then they rolled people back too, in some cases. <laughs> I mean, they were really serious back then. Something like this would have been everybody's wet dream back then, <laughs> you know, but it just nowadays it is here for a reason. It is here to help the little guy out. You know, it is here to help the people that don't have heroic counts. It's here to help people that just are trying to get back into the game, but they're not just going to put it out and open and uh, and let everybody know, hey, come here and you can power level your character. It's kind of under wraps. It's kind of like the the pick lock technique and plenty of tranquility they know it's there I mean they, they know these things there's no doubt about it so this is here to help people and if people don't want to do it it's it's perfectly alright because there's a lot of people that want to enjoy the early part of the game but if you're like me and you've played the early part of the game and you want to try to play a little bit of a higher level game where everybody's at you gotta do this you gotta power level your characters up at least to like the 50s or 60s or close to the heroic level so you can at least play together with people because if you can't after a while it, the game gets lonely you know you, you look around here in the test server this is a test server here and funny thing is there's hardly anybody here but but you look at the activity they got going well this activity is about the same mac amount of activity I see on the Vox server sometimes it's it's not a lot at the low level everybody's playing high level so that's where this game's gone and not only that is, you know, it's kind of an old game. So this is a nice thing. Enough of that said. Okay, now let's get on to the technique and basics of what is happening here. To better illustrate things, I've put it in this view right here. This is a low-level character. Well, not really low-level. I brought her in, in here one time, and she went from 25 to 30, like in a hiccup. So keep in mind, that's a test server, and we have an experience bonus over here. So things are going to go fast, but, you know, it's going to go just very, very fast on your server. So it's level 30 Ranger, and you can see the skills here. When I imported to, text, to the test server and did the buff, it brought all the skills up. Now, a lot of people say, well, you're not going to have any skills or anything like that, but the reason why I want to show the Ranger is because look at the archery skill. It's very close to being good. One hand and slashing, it's not too bad, you know? I mean, these are these are good because the way I do it, as I set it up so you also get to raise your skills at the same time. Now, I've also done with this with a wizard and his evocation skill is almost maxed. So the only thing that needs to be maxed is a defense. And, you know, you can fix that. That's not too big a deal. You get a low-level blue mob to hit you and all that. It goes up really fast on casters because intelligence is 255. So one or two mobs and you'll probably be maxed on it so anyway so we have no real problem on on the skills and don't worry about tracking you know that 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 goes up automatically you use that all the time and these other ones aren't that important so 
we're getting power leveling and keeping the skills max. So how are we going to do this? We're going to use the equipment we're using, any bow and arrow. Of course, I'm using the awesome Doom bow, but you may want to opt for something a little weaker. But at this level, I think it's appropriate. You need a low level character, which is this one. I also have this here. I got to thank uh, Doom Shade for this. Nice haste stuff. It helps attack faster. You want to have your mercs on passive. You don't want them getting involved because it will take the aggro. And you want to have a high level character. For the lower levels up to maybe about 50s or so, I would suggest using a druid. But past that, when the mobs get bigger and they hit harder, you probably want to opt for a shadow knight. And one nice thing about a shadow knight is it can uh, stack the damage shield that, that, that they use. This is a low level damage shield. It can stack the damage shield of its own with the druids one. And later on I'll show you when we get when I get to that point of what it does. So that's very, very important because what you're doing is you're pulling the amount of mobs you can take with this character, putting this character in a safe area that can fire on that, and letting the mobs destroy themselves most of the way with the damage shield. As they're being damaged with a damage shield, you use this character to attack them with bow and arrow or whatever, throwing weapons or spells. Whatever your preferred way of attacking them. Just you don't want to melee them or anything. That's a different story. So okay, so that's those are the mechanics. Let's go over it again. This character here is going to wait in a safe area in the hallway. This area, character here is going to pull as many that is safe. You have to fool around with this and find out how many. And it's going to use a damage shield to hold aggro and to damage and kill them. This character here will gain the benefits because you're not going to be grouped or anything. The way you do this is like this. This is a step one. Step one, select this person, Destria Kinmare. She is located in the plane of knowledge right over here. You, you can see it. Like I said, I never, I never knew where this woman was because I, I never come to this side of town, but she's in the north side. So you select her and hail her. She responds with this, click this, click all, click this, and click investigate. When you click this, this is going to show up. This is your task right there. Okay. Next thing you do is click shared task. Okay. After this, step two, select nature boy. Select add player. What will happen is it should send him a, a here, let's go like this. S sending a shared task invitation to Nature Boy. And this way you can see if it's really working, he's in there. Next thing you do, go to your other character. For simplicity in showing you everything, I'm doing this on one computer. But to make it go faster, I always like to use two different computers. But we'll do it from one. So I'll tab over to him. Okay, now here's Nature Boy. We're back. He gets this message. He clicks yes. This same thing shows up. Verify that this is there. She is the leader. The low level one's going to be the leader because what you want, you want the mobs to be around her level. You do not want level 85 mobs in there because one fart and she's dead. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. And he's going to have enough trouble because in the entry point, there are like three mobs right there. And if he gets 385 mobs on him, he's, he's as good as dead. I'm telling you. Okay, so after this is done... Go back to your other character. Okay, we are back, and as her, I'm going to switch the view now. Switch the view, I will select her, and now I will click ready. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we have uh, clicked in and we've gotten here. Now, <clears throat> your power leveling character can come in now or later. But what I like to do just to verify that I've got everything going is this. If he is yellowish or lower, you're in business. Now, it varies. As you go up in level, I think they just change it by level 30, 35. He will become green and so. But if you see him in red... 
you better bring the character in here and verify that that's working. Now let me bring the other character in. We're going to switch over and bring him in. Okay, we're back on the druid. Now he is selecting her. What he has to say is the word ready. Okay, we are in the game now, as you can see. Notice, they are not grouped. The idea is not to group. You don't want this, because if they're grouped, she's not going to get any experience. Notice, his Merc is on passive. This Merc will just tear through everything in a blink of an eye. Share task is up, like so. Close this window. Next thing I want to do I want to talk a little bit about what buffs you want to have up because this is really 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 important on this character the high level character you want to have your cleric buffs so that your character can withstand a lot of hits uh, it's always good to have this too so they don't cast anything and sometimes it'll get through you want to have why well, have the highest level damage shield up and it's okay at this level but when you're pulling somebody for somebody that's maybe level five this thing does over at least 130 damage. It will kill them in one hit many times before they even before you even get it back. You can pull the whole zone, they'll be dead before you get here. So if you're pulling lower level mobs, like say you've got a level 1 character in here, try and put the lowest level damage shield you have and then start bringing it up. You want the damage shield to, to not kill them in two hits because they will, they will just die like that. You want it so that it maybe takes off 15 20 percent and then later on you get the top one like right now at level 30 it takes a bunch of hits for this thing to kill them so i make sure that i have the um like the chloral pass and this up so check your character here the buffs you want to have on her you want to have chloroplast just in case then you want to have skin like nature this is i think the highest level one you can cast on a sub level 50 then you want to have shield of thorns because sometimes they do break free and if they break free it's not a bad thing because this will raise your skills if they have a sliver of life left and they break free that's a good thing in fact sometimes i try to get them to break free when they're almost dead so that the skills will go up at the same time and i get experience it's a little bit slower but you know at the end, at the end of the day your skills are going to be really close to max now on this character let's rebuff Okay, the important ones are that and this guy here. Okay, next thing, I have extended the uh, targeting window here because you want to, as a druid, be able to see, depending on how many you're pulling, you want to know what the aggro is on it. And the nice thing about new EverQuest is they have an aggro meter, and that's important. I'm going to show you how that goes. So here we go. We're going to move forward a little bit. Going to switch over and position our low level character. This is a good vantage point. Over here is where the action is going to take place. This bow can easily hit them even further. This character, we're going to start by just pulling three to demonstrate. You can go and pull the whole zone when you get good at it, but try it, uh, get used to it, then start pulling the whole zone. Okay, so we do have the spells that we do have. We have this, which is Invoke Lightning, a very low level area of effect. This is nice too. You can also use this to damage all of them. But I like to use the bow. It's a little slower because I, I want to keep the archery skill up because that's that's the most important thing for a ranger if I use this here my archer skill is gonna lag and it's gonna take a long time to bring it up so for this um, tutorial we're gonna use this range attack and later may we, may we may use that I've also used Hawkeye to increase the accuracy of it too I mean it's gonna you're gonna hit anyway at, at the level I've got it at so here we go we're gonna be here every everything on passive got our things up we're ready for action. 
going over to the druid. In this case, you have a choice. You can either leave the damage shield up or not. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it up and, and pull them like this. Here we go. Watch this. Oh, before you do it, do not attack them. Do not get in front. Now, I don't know if the, the druid reposts, but some characters that do, that's going to be a problem. Because you may kill one of these in one shot. And if you damage them with your melee or anything, she loses experience. So you want to do none of that. So here's how we're going to do it. Watch this. Okay, you see how I did that? I just got in front of them and let them beat on me. Now you'll notice you want to wait till they get a little further down and you need these other two guys to, to do some damage to you before you go back over to the ranger. Watch this here. Keep an idea on it. Okay, now if this gets a little lower before the... Okay, now they're taking damage. We're going to switch over. Okay, now that we're switched over, press F8, fire off an arrow. You'll see the list come up. Notice 100 on aggro. Select the next one. Watch the aggro meter. Uh, look, that's 32. Okay, so we have a hit. I think this one we should put another one on. You can go up to about 100. There. You will notice that if you do this, your skill is going to go up. Nature Boy is doing fine. He's at 60. Okay, I like to pop another arrow. Just while they kill themselves. See, 89. You don't want to go any higher than that. You can go up to about 100. There. See, look at I'm doing damage to them. And you're not seeing it now because my skills are already so darn high. But you will raise your skill doing this. And then we're just going to wait. And they will kill themselves on the damage shield. Now, you see his damage shield only does about 100 something. Let's go back to him and take a look. See over here, he's doing about 130 damage by being hit by them every time. They will not run. They will just kill themselves on it. Also, you'll notice I keep my face to the wall. Uh, it allows them to hit you more often. See how many times they miss? By keeping your face to the wall, you're guaranteed that they're going to hit more. And uh, that's what you want. You could, if they're having trouble, you could always sit down, let them whack you. See, look, they hit you more and you can out heal them so somebody's gonna die okay let's watch the experience it's right there they're gonna die any minute you can also expedite the process when they're this low you can nail them with a uh, an arrow if you want to we're at level 30 and about right there but they're gonna let's just watch them any minute. So right here, if you want it, you can fire off the AOE. Wait, let's just do that. Oh, died so fast. And, oh, it can only be shot off outdoors. Okay, well, here, let's just do this. Oh, he died so fast. Anyway, look at that. Three of these guys, just three, got me one level. This is on the test server. So I think our bonus is about 100%. That means three of these guys is going to get you half a level. And I could have expedited the process by either nuking them. I could do a nuke or I could have uh, hit them with the, the doom bow and hit them with the arrow again. So you're going to get loot. Sometimes you're going to get some good stuff. But that was not bad. That was only for three of them. Just three. Okay, so this is how you do it with a ranger. And remember, the idea is the technique. This character here, the ranger, the low level, is going to be putting a minimal amount of damage. The reason why FC7 uses the stone throw is it's a guaranteed one damage. If your skill is high enough, you can use a ranged weapon, and most melee characters have some form of bow and arrow or throwing weapon or something. And you can use that to get the, one, the small damage. This character will kill them with a damage shield facing this way, facing like that. You have to judge based on how strong the character is and how many you can pull because you can pull the whole zone. You can pull 15, 16 of them 
uh, if your character can withstand it. And like I said, later on, you want to try with a Shadow Knight because Shadow Knight will stack damage shields, I believe. This guy here, the, sh the thorn shield he has, plus the Shadow Knight has a, a damage shield too. And Shadow Knight also has a, a, a skin that they can put up that when they're hit, it actually heals them a little bit. So they're much more robust and that will carry you up into the higher levels. And conceivably, you could get um, high level mobs maybe not pulling the whole zone but maybe like pulling two or three at a time and uh, they're close to this guy maybe they're like low blue to him and you could really get this character maybe even past 75 because the reason why it tops out at 75 is because it at some point it becomes inefficient for this character at his level but of course if you have a 105 you know you can do whatever you want okay Hope you guys like this, and uh, I will add more to it if uh, if I find any more. But but stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Okay, so we've been power leveling our ranger here, and we went from 25 to 49. I made a few changes now, and I want to show you something that you're going to need to do as you get higher level up. The thing is, is the druid damage shield that level 85 only does 130 damage which isn't that much but if you use a shadow knight the shadow knight can stack his damage shield with the druids together you get about 207 damage which is really really nice makes things go a lot faster and uh, as you go forward this character can really tank a lot better than anything now I want to focus on another thing and that is the skills as you can see here one-handed slashing it's not bad I came in at 150 I got 181 uh, archery I stopped doing I ran out of arrows and we have defense is lagging of course but look at this double attack is good um, offense not bad triple attack takes a little work you know and same with all these other ones here but I just wanted to show that you can get your skills up and I'm going to show you how to to work on the skills while they're beating on his back because as you get higher level it takes a long time in some cases for them to the monsters to kill themselves on his damage shield because by now they're at level 50 or close to it so every time you go up uh, at five levels from 50 to 55 to 60 the mobs will scale to that level so right now we're still going to be fighting level 45 mobs but as soon as we hit 50 and come back in here they're going to be 50 and they're going to be all uh, yellow and, and, and red and so forth so it's, it's important to know that because the next step up you're going to find that this guy you're going to need something like that in other news I'm on the test server you can see here uh, the fabled mobs are going to start showing up on April 12th. I have a video that I'm going to show about the fabled Drelzna. And that is one fabled you really, really want to get. And the reason why she has fabled J boots. Let me show you here. I got mine already on the test server, which is nice. So uh, this will come to live. And don't miss out on it because even though they're, people don't always need it, they're a very useful item. Okay, so let's start this again. But first, I'm going to check the uh, Shadow Knight. Let's hang in there. Okay, let's do buff check. He's got 26 minutes left on uh, Breer Bloom Bulwark. This is a damage shield from the Druid. He's got 4 minutes left on Malarian Skin. You have to be careful not to face the enemy because your riposte will just rip them to shreds. I, I was able to kill some of them in, in one, one accidental riposte, which is really, really bad. Okay, so I want to keep Spirit of Wolf on him. Keep this, the uh, Spirit of the Resolute. This helps regenerate him. And he's pretty much unstoppable at this, at this point. Okay, so going back to uh, the Ranger. As you remember, everything starts with the low-level character. This is the one that's in control. Let's initiate conversation again.
the window shows up click shared task click on the person you want to, to join not her but him and click add player over here it will send him a, a request back over here click yes and you should see yourself in the shared task window at this point I just put it over here just to verify everything's okay I'm gonna go back to this character okay we are here now what you want to do click on her and select ready okay so right now our uh, our ranger has uh, gone in there and it's now our time to to say ready now you want to get close enough for this to happen um, if you're far, far enough too far away it won't happen so let's type it out okay and you say this to her that's all you do Okay, so we're in. We're going to do a mob check. We're going to the lower level character. Okay, here we go. Now, the first thing you want to do is check the mob. And if they are blue, you are in business. Everything is correct. Later, when you get to level 50, they may be yellow and, and red, but that's okay. Get in position. We're going to do three mobs first. It is his turn now. I'm going to close the window and get in position. You got to be really careful. If you see one of the mobs where his health is like 90% gone, he he's finished. It means he's he's not going to give experience. So just be really careful. Here we go. Okay, so you see, mission accomplished. That was successful. We were able to get in here, and there we got three aggros on us. Now, you may notice they have trouble hitting us. So what I do is just go like this. Hit sit button. Hit sit button. Like so. Let them get some free wax on you. Okay, one more. And this will actually speed it up. You know, we're not taking any damage. They're only hitting for this. But look at this. 207. If you go back... And look at the video earlier, you'll see the druid was only doing 130. But with this, and I believe it's this. No, I think it's this. Yeah, see this one here? The drape of uh, Corfax. And you have this too. So you have two damage shields that are doing damage. And you have this as protecting you and all that. You could conceivably pull the whole zone if you want, but you have to select the targets one at another. Let's go back to the ranger now that they all have slight damage. First thing you want to do, pop, use your spell or your arrow. I ran out of arrows and too lazy to get some, so let's hit him with one of these. Now you notice as soon as you hit one, it brings up this extended target list now I usually have it situated set up differently so I can see the whole list but for this we're only going to show three okay so you look at this number here this number what it tells you is they're aggro on you you can do a couple things to make them more aggro against you you can sit down you can have somebody heal you any of those things will cause them to go aggro also depending on how close you get so stay far away and manage the number so let's go to this guy here See, he's a four, right? So a four, watch. Pop this. I use the lowest level spell, by the way. It only hits for 46, but he went from four to 80. If he gets up close to 150 or 200, he can aggro and come and attack you. So don't, don't go too high. Hit him with the lowest level spell you can. See, we make sure it hits. He's at 83 now. 
Now at this point, you can do one or two things. You can pull one of these guys just for you when he gets lower. So I like to run this number a little higher. I go like this, and this way you get some combat practice. And I usually like to wait till he gets down to about here because these guys can still hit. Believe me, he's got at 160, maybe this guy here. Let's pop one on him. He's at 121. Okay, this is the guy we want here. Let's get this, pull this guy. One more hit and he'll come. That's now this is where we want you. See, notice the number 200? Past 200. And look at the offense is going up and everything. And this is, this is exactly what you want to have happen. When he's almost half dead and he's got one one foot in the coffin, then, uh, you know, you come and you pull him. And you don't take any damage. Now you go back to this other, this numbskull over here. And it hit him. Let, let's pull this guy in. A bit. Let's get this number a little higher. It's 160. Here he comes. Good, we actually need some gloves. So, see, sometimes it works out. Make sure you get all the goodies here. Look at our disarm is going up. All our skills are going up. And this is how you get the skills to go up. Okay, this guy, he's on his uh, last leg. So, watch. When we set the heel on with our cleric, watch this number. Well, it didn't do it this time. Okay, so let's it's, it's nail him. I don't think we're going to get him. He's, he's taking too much damage over there. So, come on, maybe we can do it. This is always nice. There, good. You don't actually have to attack him. You could just sit here and do this. And then when, when you go down a little bit, see, he's, he's really pretty much ready to drop he, he died on our damage shield but anyway look at look at the uh, skill increases we got repose we got that channeling by using the spells we get channeling way way up there and it gets better and better but I was using the arrow before bow and arrow and I just I had like 400 arrows and I was just having a field day because the arrow does not add much aggro to them at all so you can shoot sometimes four or five arrows per monster and that is just great because if you have a haste item like this and you have uh, a bow that's already quite fast like, let me show you what we have this is a doom bow that this is quite fast and look at this thing so this guy right here it just cranks him out okay other thing I want to point out when I come into the hatchery, I like to get two areas. And two areas I like are this side and this side. I don't like to go through here because for some reason with this guy, you go take a turn. And you take a turn and you turn too much or something and somebody gets kind of halfway on your side, the repose just shreds them right there. And I've gone through here and just pulled the whole zone one time and then it came back and it's like one third of the guys had been killed by repost. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's that bad. So what I do is I focus on these two lanes and, and actually by that time his uh, damage shield's worn off. If you want to work these lanes and go and work the back in the middle, you can, but bring the druid in with you because the damage shield will wear. So let's see how he's doing. Okay, as you can see, we have 18 minutes left. That's more than enough time. And I'm going to pull one more. Actually, what I'll do is I'm going to pull all of it. I'm going to carefully pull all of it, and I'm going to show you something. When he's in here and they're all cluttered, sometimes it's very hard to get the extended target list to come all the way up because for some reason they're blocking them. But the thing is, if you had an area of effect spell you could do it. Let's say like with my wizard it was no problem because I just kept dropping that low level AOE spell on them. Okay, so let's go pull it. Last hurrah here. Then we'll end the video after we do that, okay? So maybe I just pull two side lanes.
as you can see I missed one down there but look at this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so there's eleven and uh, as you can see here let's put the malarian skin up as you can see we need to see a little more damage on each one so we can start the party a little more a little more a little more okay that's good let's go back to other character okay we're back now see see what happens you only get one because there's so many darn mobs here now this one see there's nothing on it that means we need to actually tag these individually it's a lot more work this way oh there we go bingo we got the entire listo just what we want okay so let's get to work so the way we go look for the one that's getting hit the most and a low number this guy here tag each one like such and this guy here low level spell uses little mana cast fast increases your s your skill it will hit every time for some reason it, it, it doesn't have a problem and usually I try to just keep hitting it until I get up to about 80 or something and the reason why I do that is because you raise this evocation skill and you really need this there we go let's see who else this guy's only at a three you can tell by the color here that the aggro is lower so that gives you a hint into how aggro works the lower level guys will have it will not raise up as high on you versus the blue ones it'll raise up very high very fast so this is kind of like when you're going out there and hunting and you see a light blue mob and you can get a lot closer to him than say a red mob or a dark blue so here we go let's manage this pop some more and at this point we could just sit back and go bake a cake or something and then come back and you'd have this huge increase in experience but I like to just keep popping away at them and getting the skill increases okay nothing here okay they're 88 88 we're gonna see let's this guy would be good to pull so we could oh no this guy so we could actually fight him but it, it may be too late yep that is a doornail I mean it goes fast here let's try to get this one we want to have one we can fight with oh come on this guy oh. we don't want him to be too strong we just remember one foot in the coffin that's what you want okay good victim number one while he's killing the other ones we, we get to work on this this dingling here and that's that's really nice see that's what you want okay here's the uh, next victim okay come on uh, yep come on he's gonna probably die I mean that's the thing when you have a damage shield like that everybody just dies as in fast okay look at that we already into level 50 just like that it's advised you know you don't go to past 52 because you may want to do Nagafin and box so I'm, I'm gonna stop all the characters at 52 try those dragons out seems like nobody really hunts them because why should you when you have Malala Finn you get this so much easier here comes a victim I mean the, the, the staff looks nice but he, he never drops anything so they just whack whack him look at triple attack 17 look at this I have flame song and black blade of tormenting just tearing him a new one okay ah this guy died okay so who's next this guy you want to get these guys the melee ones some of these casters if you pull them the bad thing is they just, they don't really fight you to just stand there and start casting on you it's kind of annoying like, oh god he died ah what does it take you know look at this shadow knight i'm telling you it rocks it just kills them for you you know you could do this and just go do whatever and come back and look at this just going all the way up there come on please please come oh good finally yeah, give us some love and if you want you could do this take off melee attack 
let him beat on you a few times, but he's gonna kill himself on a damage shield. That way your defense will go up. See, look at we got this here. At least it'll do something. Or you can just take the damage shield off, period. Here, let's do that. And let it let him beat on us a little. These guys are gonna die. And then this will hopefully bring this uh let's just kill this guy. Why you gotta do that? Why you gotta cast spells? There we go. Bring the cleric on to heal. See channeling going up. They're dead. Oh good. See how they aggro the cleric? <laughs> It's okay. More for us to beat on. Okay, come on. The cleric's pretty tough. And we just have a sliver of life left. Look at the skills going up here. And do this, you know. It also helps you get rid of the boredom because... It, it's extremely boring doing this you know you, you do it over and over and over and just you get bored to tears doing it so by doing this it keeps it a little fun at least you know you feel like you're doing something this thing the funny thing if I do this on the Vox server these things sell for bucks over there believe it or not I, I don't I forgot what they sell for maybe like 200 or something but I get so many of these over here but and as you know on the test server money's pretty useless you know nobody needs money over here but back on the live server you, you do this you're gonna have like 50 of those you, I mean each level you get lots of them anyway so here we are this is where we are you went from 49 to this we did one level we pulled this wing this wing both these wings in the center and that that's enough for one level then we can go out at, at each round level what I would do instead of wasting time pulling more stuff go out come back in everything will be yellow or white or red to you and then it, the experience will come even faster and this guy he'll just kill him like a hot knife through butter okay and finally what you want to do when you exit this thing make sure to remove the task exit and then remove the task do not complete the task at all you don't want to do that you just want to keep starting it and playing it a little at a time without doing it. that's very very important and uh, finally all I can just say is use your low level spells you want if if you don't want to use a, a damage spell on them you can damage them with a light damage spell and then you can do something like heal yourself. As you heal yourself, you'll notice the aggro numbers will start going up and you can heal yourself and pull them by just healing yourself. That's how it works. It's pretty cool. So let's say I guess you're a cleric and you want to work on alteration or whatever. You just damage them a little and just start healing yourself and you'll start pulling them that way. Another thing to do that you don't want to do do not sit down because if you sit down it aggros all of them you'll see just how well it works and the whole horde will come in I made the mistake one time I sat down and they all like 15 of them came after me so I end up having to zone out here okay guys I hope you uh, enjoy this and learn something I try to cover all little details of how this works level 85 shadow knight let's look at his uh, buffs real quick but this goes back here uh, I want to show you and the, the trick is is uh, the drape here and then this one here and you keep the malarian skin to absorb damage because you will need it as you get higher and closer to level 70 you're definitely going to need to do that okay guys thank you for watching and uh, happy power leveling